as these come down, it becomes easier to make a living marketing to a niche, right? There are artists, there are film producers, there are people out there that have very small niches and they're making a living. I know a guy who does nothing but sells Swedish music. Not Swedish pop, but like Swedish folk music. And he's doing just fine, <laughs> really fine. So, and again, this is kind of dated, um, but this is a real good example of something that was marketed to a niche and has blown up. What's a better example of a film that did this recently? Sorry, well, well, Borat. <laughs> did you say Borat? Yeah. I love that example. It's not what I was thinking about. I love that example because Borat was something that started as an HBO show, right? And, you know, through Sexy Time and all the other funny things that he said, it, it grew. But that, was, that became a big kind of mainstream thing. I'm, I'm thinking of something else that was a, a small niche-based film that blew up, had similarly offensive themes to Borat, but not quite as offensive, and a cute little girl who dances. Little Miss Sunshine, right? This was a movie that took 10 years to make by a bunch of MTV film directors, right? Now, have you all seen Little Miss Sunshine? Right? So, do you think that these people were psyched to be directors for videos that were shown on MTV, given this theme of Little Miss Sunshine? They were miserable, right? Just like T.S. Eliot, just like Faulkner sorting the mail. These people did it to create their art. They made, does anybody know how much Little Miss Sunshine cost to make? $2 million, okay? It was bought by, um, I'm blanking on the name of the studio that bought it, for $8 million, okay? And it's made about oh, $400 million now, right? Um, and it did that because it started in a niche. It started in the, we don't really have an art theater here um, in New Orleans, but lots of cities do, a place Wait, where, I'm sorry? There's a one in Canal Place. Okay. Shows yeah, right, right. Um, so movies that, that just start out in these little niches, and how do they grow? How does it happen? What's the, the yeah, right? So it's so good, it's so compelling. Um, little Olive was so cute that you end up telling people about it, and it begins to grow. Ani DeFranco is another example. Her, her star has started to fade a little bit in recent years, but um, she is someone that was, you know, selling CDs out of her car. I think if you want to be successful in the music business, sell CDs out of your car, quite frankly. I don't know anyone who's been successful in the music business who has not at one point or another sold CDs out of their car. From Chris Blackwell to you know, every hip hop artist to Andy DeFranco, right? And what they're doing is they're selling to niches. They're going, they're playing shows, and then they're opening their trunk, literally or figuratively, and selling CDs right out of there. Why? Because they're connecting emotionally and directly with their customers giving them word of mouth and making it actionable for their customer to go when they go home and want to show it to other people, right? This was sold out of the trunk, right? Little Miss Sunshine was sold out of a trunk. Annie DeFranco sold stuff out of the trunk. This is the best photo I could find to represent Bollywood, all right? And the reason I put it up there um, was because, anybody know what Bollywood is? You all know now because of Richard Gere, right? Um, <laughs> Uh, that's a crazy thing that is. Um, anyway, so Bollywood is, is the Indian version of Hollywood, except for they make about 6,000 movies a year, and they're all very strange. My wife loves them for some reason. She has made me suffer through exactly one of them, and then I refuse to never watch any more of them. But some people really like it, right? So Netflix started their, their service, and someone got the bright idea to say, well, why don't we make some, some Bollywood movies available for, for rent, for people to put in their queue? Not knowing what it would be, not knowing, um, there's some burned out lights going on, Lord only knows what else is gonna come up. But, um, not knowing how many people would be interested in something like this. And in the first month, 100,000 people rented Bollywood movies. Now my wife was responsible for probably three or four of those movies, but you know, <laughs> It's, it's hard to believe that there are 100,000 other people out there like my wife. Um, it's both <laughs> scary and good, I guess. But anyway, the, the point is, is that these are all niches, right? And sometimes these niches start to explode. Now, poor John Heater or whatever his name is, his little niche is about to collapse around him, right? Annie DeFranco is always going to be Annie DeFranco. She's got a niche. There are always going to be girls coming up and guys coming up through high school that kind of want to hear that stuff in the same way kids want to hear Dark Side of the Moon, right? It, it begins to be a psychographic thing. There are millions of Indians living in this country now. 
and there are millions of nuts who like Bollywood even though they're not Indian, right? So you find those niches and you start to be able to be sustain, to sustain them. The thing that makes it possible is that we can now connect directly, right? Little Miss Sunshine gets out into the world via these art theaters and then gets out via DVD rentals. I've already made one Big Lebowski reference, I'll make another one, right? Everyone here has seen that movie, right? Everyone. Anybody see it in the theaters? Any, you did? Good for you, man. You're the, you're, you, that, that's about the right proportion. There are, what, 30 people in here? One out of 30 saw it in the theaters, and everyone saw it on DVD. What would have happened pre-DVD? It would have gone away. It's the technology that's allowing these niches to explode. You know, of course, that there are now Big Lebowski action figures um, that will be available soon. Um, OK, so the more developed these markets get, the more diverse they can become. You get producers with a ton of latitude to educate their artists. I think of David Lynch, right? One of my favorite movie makers. He is someone that educates his audience. I remember distinctly being in 11th grade and going to see Blue Velvet and just being like, what in God's name is going on, right? Now I look at Blue Velvet and it makes perfect sense to me. And I don't think it's because I'm smarter. I think it's because David Lynch has dragged kicking and screaming audiences and raised the level of discord, discourse via his, his continued movies, his talking, you know, and this is what goes on with artists too. If someone was to play, you know, the new Def Jux record back in time 10 or 15 years ago when people were listening to Run DMC, people, you know, it wouldn't have made sense. Right? And now it makes sense because the artists have educated us going through these niches. The economic growth allows us to specialize and get more sophisticated. It allow, allows people like John Cage to win genius awards. Right? It allows people like Ornette Coleman to be awarded a, a, a I always screw this up, a Pulitzer Prize and before that a, a Lifetime Achievement Award for the Grammys. You know, I don't know how many of you all have listened to Ornette's music. I hope all of you. Yes, sir. Or you just just shout out for Ornette. Um, it's challenging, okay? But it's something that we're able to understand because he educates us. And it, it, at a certain point, the world starts to go. Oh, you know what? I kind of get that now, right? Same thing happened with Faulkner. I, I kind of get as I lay dying now, but it takes time, and you can only get that time through a well-developed market. <clears throat>